hello hello you beautiful souls welcome back to my channel my name is michelle we talk all things life love spirituality law of attraction and all of that juicy goodness in this video we are going to do two page pulls from 365 ways to raise your frequency and we know on the spiritual journey we are living in a vibrational universe a universe based in frequency so we have to learn how to attune our vessel to maneuver through life more effortlessly. And the reason why I got this book is because I wanted to feel into different ways because I get stuck in routines and I'm like, oh, I feel like I always do the same thing. I'm always meditating on my deck. I'm always going for walks. And I want to learn new ways of how I can maybe invigorate my system or even just expand my consciousness to think about something differently that will then spark a higher vibration or a higher frequency inside of me. So that's why I bought this book. Um, and I figured we could pull two pages today and see, oh, there's a butterfly on my balcony. <laughs> Confirmation. Okay, let's pull a page. And lately I've been doing a game where if you guys say stop, then maybe we'll have telepathy and I'll stop at the exact time that you say it. Ready? Here we go. Stop. Left side. Okay. Keep a promise. For me, a promise is my word. I try very hard to always keep the promises I make. The feeling of disappointment that is associated with a broken promise is something I do everything I can to avoid. For some people, making a promise is just a way to shut someone up or to get out of a situation. They make a promise without having any intention of following through. These are negative actions. When you keep promises that you make, whether it's a promise to yourself or to someone else, you're increasing your vibration because you're keeping your word. Think back on times when you didn't keep a promise to someone else. Were they disappointed, sad, or upset because you didn't do what you said you'd do? Did you feel small because you didn't follow through on your promise or couldn't have cared less? Remember that words hold a lot of power. When you associate a promise with words, you're giving those words even more power. Now think of times that you did, that you did do what you promised. How did the other person feel? Were they happy and proud of you for what you did? Did you make someone else's job easier because you delivered? How did you feel? Were you proud of yourself or happy that you made someone smile? And the little quote at the bottom says, if you can't keep your word and follow through, don't make promises. It's funny because I just did a video the other day. I don't remember which video it was, but I was talking about how I have transformed myself into somebody who shows up. Oh, it was the Redwood. I did a page pull in journey to the heart and there was a page about redwood trees and how to be patient, how to be solid and how to show up for people. And I wasn't always that way. And that, and I was explaining that it can be because of our grief. It can be because of pain and trauma. Maybe we're like filled to the brim with so much suffering that we don't have space to show up for other people. So we say, yeah, we'll do this. And then we don't plan on doing it. Um, but once we diffuse the trauma and lower and lower and lower it, now we have all of the space. Now we feel okay going places. Now we feel okay signing up to do things ahead of time. And we don't have that anxiety of commitment, right? Because when we feel like we have to commit to something, a lot of times it's because we don't have enough space in our body to do the extra things in life that we just want to focus on ourselves because that's our pain talking. But if you can heal and work through the trauma that your body is holding, you release so much more energy and then you want to show up for people and you get to be that person where, you know, you're so reliable. And I sometimes still do this and I catch myself with my nieces and my nephews just because my schedule is so here and there. Um, like I might have somebody book me for a last minute reading if they have an emergency going on in their life and I have to cancel with my nieces and my nephews sometimes. And I know that they understand but sometimes I'm like, oh man, they're probably super sad because they were looking forward to doing something and then they got let down. So I try to be somebody that's always holding my word, but at the same time, life happens. So we have to teach kids that it's okay to not have life go the way you planned and to pivot because something better might be around the corner. Okay, so let's do another one. So remember, keep your promises. And if you're not keeping your promises, ask yourself, is this because of pain and trauma? Am I being selfish because I just, and not in a negative way, but you just don't have the space to go and show up for other people the way they're asking you to. So you make the promise and then you just never go. My advice is don't make the promise. If you're in your pain, just be honest and say, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. 
I have too much going on. Be honest. Okay, ready? Tell me when to stop. Right side. Okay, sinking and melting away exercises. Interesting. A good way to connect with your energy is to practice sinking exercises. You can do sinking exercises with creative visualization. Lie on your bed and then imagine your body sinking into the mattress. As you sink, you'll feel the softness of the mattress surrounding your body as you descend down into it. You can also do sinking exercises while sitting on a chair. Imagine your body is sinking down through the chair until you are on the floor. Now lie down on the floor. Imagine yourself sinking into the hardness of the floor. How does the flooring material feel as it wraps around you? Does it hold you firmly in place? As you do these exercises, you're connecting to the vibrational rates of the materials that you're sinking into. This is why I bought this book. And what a cool concept. I would have never thought to do this. It says melting away is when you imagine your skin melting away from your body, shedding off of you like a snake skin. This sounds gross, but bear with me. Imagine it piling up around your feet as it does. It releases all negative energy. Now imagine that it reattaches to you, bringing positive energy back to you as you become whole again. If you can get past the ick factor, this exercise will take you to much higher levels. An alternative is to pretend your bones are collapsing, leaving you in a puddle on the floor. You then rise up to be the complete person you are, in, you are inside. Try both of these exercises today and record your impressions. Sink and melt for complete rejuvenation. I kind of like that. I can, I don't know about you guys, but I can totally, um, I can imagine the melting piece, like feeling like you're just a pile of mush on the floor and you're just like so relaxed, so calm. You don't need to stand up straight. You don't need to smile. You can just be there. And then when it's time to get up and walk away, it's kind of like all of those pieces kind of come up and just fill out the energy spaces in your body, your bones, your structure. And then you can walk a little bit firmer like that, that costume just got cleansed on the floor. I kind of like that exercise. That was really cool. So I hope you enjoy these messages. I do page pulls because it helps me connect to what I need to hear that day. It's tuning into how spirit and the universe is talking to us. And if you're feeling lost on your journey, grab a random book in your house, open up to a random page and say, spirit, talk to me. Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me what I need to hear and then take action on it. There's a book I'm reading called The Creative Act. And um, the author talks about how he had gotten a diagnosis that he would need to get his appendix out. And um, he found himself in a bookstore and he went up to a random book in the bookstore, picked a random page. The first sentence he reads is when somebody's telling you that a body part needs to be removed, second guess it, get, go get a second opinion. How perfect was that message? It was spirit saying, don't get your appendix removed. And in the book, he was saying, I still have my appendix. He followed that guide from spirit for that message. So we can use these books as tools. We can use cards. We can use, um, there's so many different things that you can even just pick up a document and go to a certain paragraph and just be like, what does this sentence mean? Or what is it trying to tell me? Spirit speaks to us in so many different ways, but we sometimes have to open up the book, open up the communication and ask for it. And also in that book, he talks about getting out into life, going to cafes, overhearing conversations and seeing how spirit is talking to us through other people, through strangers, through music. So if you feel stuck in your life, grab a book, pull a page, grab a deck of cards, pull a card, go to a cafe, tune into what's happening around you, do an intuitive day, just get in your car and just go be led. Okay. And start to live this way. The more you can live by being led and being moved, the less the ego has an opinion. And the more you trust this thing, we can't see, feel, or touch, which is spirit, which is the universe, which is God, then we can live life and actually do what we came here to do because we're following the guidance of our heart and our spirit. And that to me is the best way to live because it's just a day full of magic. And you're like, oh my gosh, I was like, imagine him finding that page about the appendix, <laughs> about a body part. He's like, he must've felt so safe and secure. Okay, God is literally telling me not to do this. And you get an answer. Whereas if he didn't go to the bookstore, he would have been walking around wondering what to do. Maybe feeling like his intuition was saying like, do I do this? But kind of being like, all right, well, I guess I should listen to a doctor. They know what they're talking about. 
So him going to the bookstore was spirit leading him to get the answers that he needed. So if you feel that nudge to go to a bookstore, to go to a cafe, like I talked about, do it. You have to start being led in life. This will change the game. And all of a sudden, these little small moments start to add up into a bigger puzzle piece and they start to click into place. And then your life begins to make sense and you're not feeling stuck anywhere because you know that every movement is like a piece being moved on a chessboard. Every piece has a purpose. Every nudge is meaningful. So be sure to honor that. And if you need help learning how to do this, I love coaching people through this process. I work with women for eight weeks in a mentorship program. I'm also opening up a group coaching program to get more than one person on the Zoom with me so we can all kind of grow and learn together. And I will coach you all through the steps you can take to start being led by spirit, to start healing, to start expanding, to start manifesting your dream life. Your dream life can only be reached if you are led. Okay. You have to start in the imagination and then follow the breadcrumbs the universe gives you and then face the fear when the manifestation arrives to go into it and to lean into it where your edges are, where you start to feel like, I don't know if I can do this. That's where you lean into it and you go. And I can coach you through those moments because that can be really hard to do because you might be confusing that next step. You might be thinking it's fear saying, don't do it. That's not the right step. And that's not the case. We follow our fear. We push to our edge, to our limit. And then as soon as we do it, we're like, oh my gosh, that was just a learning curve. I just needed to push through the growth moment of, you know, when you're lifting weights and it feels painful, it feels hard. You don't just stop. You know that you have to push through those moments because that's where the muscle is tearing and then rebuilding. So we have to do that on the spiritual journey. We have to push through the discomfort of speaking our truth of standing up for ourselves, of saying yes to this job that we've never done before. And it's a growth moment. You're pushing through the pain of that exercise and you know that you're gonna feel better afterwards. You're gonna look better, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna sound better. Everything is gonna be clicking into place. So if you need help, everything is in the description box below. I'm sending you so much love. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, help me get these messages out there. And thank you for supporting me and my channel. All right, lovies, peace out.